user group, the very first item we spoke about was having a tug specifically covering 508 compliance and accessibility and using Tableau. For me, it was an important topic that I believe many did not consider on a frequent enough basis. I did not know at the time how passionate our co-lead, Emily, was about accessibility. Unbeknownst to me, Emily had been speaking to just about anyone and everyone at Tableau for years about the importance of working towards a much more accessible product. With that, I'm very proud to introduce a true community champion on this topic and our co-leader, Emily Kuhn. Thanks, Caesar. That's such a great intro. I need to send you some money for that. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar's right. When we started GovTug, this was really like one of the first topics that was like, we've got to talk about accessibility. We've got to talk about Section 508 compliance um, here, especially in the federal government. It's a big deal. So I am super excited that today is all about accessibility. Um, so I want to, um, so I appreciate that. I'm excited for today's tug. So let's get it started. Well, great. Our guest today is Cal Gupton. He's a uh, director of product development at Tableau. Cal's main focus is to make Tableau accessible to the largest group of people possible. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce Kyle. Kyle. All right. Uh, thank you, Caesar, and thank you, Emily. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started and share my screen. Okay, and then put things. Uh, can you see my slides? Okay, just checking. Um, they're, they're up. Thanks, Kyle. Oh, excellent. All right. So uh, again, my name is Kyle Gupton. I'm a director of product development here at Tableau, and I'm going to talk today about how to author Tableau content for accessibility. This was actually um, originally done uh, as a presentation at Tableau Conference back in November, um, but we've had a lot of good uh, development happen since then in terms of our first product release that really has a lot of new features focused around accessibility. So today, um, I'm basically going to try to take everyone from the ground up. Um, so I'm going to start with the basics of what uh, accessibility is all about. I'm going to talk about the web accessibility standards, how to author for accessibility in Tableau, a case study of taking a visualization uh, and making it more accessible than it is, and then talk about what's coming and actually what came uh, in Tableau 10.2. So let's get started with the basics. So accessibility is the usability of a system by people with disabilities. Um, each type of disability that someone might have requires a different type of accommodation in the system. So some of the examples of disabilities may include vision impairments, deafness or hearing loss, learning disabilities, cognitive limitations, limited movement, and so forth. Within each of these kinds or types of disabilities, there are different degrees. And different degrees of these impairments uh, do require different levels of accommodation. So we're talking about specifically accessibility for computer systems. And to make computer systems more accessible, there are things that are called assistive technologies, or AT. And I did want to remind everyone, I, I neglected to do so at the beginning, that if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function, and Caesar will help moderate the questions for us. All right, so let's take a look at some examples of some of the assistive technologies, uh, some of the assistive technologies uh, that are available. So in this first group, there are a couple of examples of AT that are designed to help people with limited movement interact with a computer. On the left, we have what's called a keyless keyboard. This kind of keyboard basically allows someone with uh, larger level motor control, but not fine grained motor control, interface with the computer by still using a keyboard by turning these two large switches. On the right, uh, the gentleman is using what's called a sip and puff switch. Uh, it's basically a straw that you use your mouth to either sip or puff on. And these can be used to control wheelchairs or computers and a variety of other devices. One key thing about this, and we'll come back to this later, is that both of these devices interface with the computer through its standard keyboard interface, um, which uh, brings to light why keyboard navigation is such an important thing in accessibility. Next, let's look at some assistive technologies uh, designed to help people with vision impairments. So that on the left, we have what's called a refreshable braille display. It displays in braille 
lines of text that display on the computer. On the right are just some logos for a couple of examples of what's called screen reader software. So these are basically software applications that will read to you in a computer-generated voice text that's on a computer screen. The most widely used one is called JAWS. Uh, it's available for the Windows platform. There are also several others, including NVDA, which is an open source free version, uh, also available for Windows. And then uh, there are ones that are included both with Windows uh, called Narrator and with Macintosh called VoiceOver. So let's talk a bit more about vision impairments because vision obviously is particularly important for a product like Tableau, uh, which is a visual analytics package. So one thing to, to recognize is that vision impairments exist on a wide scale. It's not perfect vision or total blindness. There are a variety of different kinds of impairments, some of which are very common. So an example of a very common one is color blindness, uh, particularly in males. About 8% of males are colorblind, red-green colorblind, and about half a percent of females. So um, it's a significant percentage of the population has that particular kind of vision impairment. And there are others that are, that are quite rare. Um, in terms of vision impairment, just to define our terms, vision impairment generally means um, a, or a visual disability generally means an impairment that cannot be corrected by either corrective lenses, surgery, or medication. So I wear glasses, um, but in this terminology, I do not have a visual disability because my vision can be corrected with lenses. So to get an idea of the impact of some visual impairments, I put together some simulations to help us better appreciate what these might be. So here I have a, uh, an image of a standard Tableau visualization uh, example that has shipped with the product for a long time. And we're gonna come back to this throughout the presentation. Uh, basically what it does is it shows SAT performance of students at a hypothetical university divided by what division of the university they're in, what college, as well as male-female. So this is um, kind of the raw visualization and what I did is I found a plugin for the Chrome web browser that allows you to simulate uh, various different kinds of visual disabilities. So now I'm showing a simulation of the image um, with a basically a red-green color blindness filter applied to it. Um, with this, you basically lose a lot of the color content um, that's in the visualization. Uh, it makes the colors look differently uh, than they were originally designed to be. And in particular, it makes many of the lines on the line chart difficult to distinguish from each other. In this next simulation, uh, we have a simulation of basically no color vision. It's a relatively rare visual disability, but it does exist. Um, it you know, means that the world is perceived through shades of gray. So as you can see in this particular case, you completely lose the ability to distinguish the marks from each other uh, in the histogram. And it becomes even more difficult to distinguish the lines from each other in the line chart. In this next simulation, uh, we have contrast sensitivity loss. So this is actually quite common, and in fact, contrast sensitivity loss uh, happens for people um, basically who need corrective lenses as well. And what this means is someone with this disability will have a, difficult, a more difficult time distinguishing you know, between high and low contrast items or foreground and background items, particularly with text. This next simulation uh, is a simulation of what is termed typically low vision. Um, so even with correction, this may be the best visual acuity um, that a person can have. And then finally, we have no ability to perceive light at all. So the simulation is a completely black screen. So obviously, vision impairments in Tableau are very important because our mission is to help people to see and understand their data. And in fact, much of the value of Tableau comes from the fact that it leverages our most powerful sense, which is vision, to help us better understand data. So that's a bit of a conundrum when you think about how to make Tableau visualizations more accessible to people with visual disabilities. So our goal here is basically kind of twofold. Uh, first, it's to author Tableau. So when we're authoring for accessibility, we can make choices that allow Tableau content 
to be accessible by more people with visual vision impairments, say people with various kinds of color blindness or contrast sensitivity loss, and allow everyone to have access to the same information and data that's in a visualization. So it's about expanding the number of people who can get use out of a Tableau visualization, as well as making sure that everyone has access to the information that's contained in that visualization. And you'll see how they, we do that as we go forward. So I do want to touch on the legal aspect. This is a government user group. Um, so the, the main law that we think of when we talk about this is Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. It's a US law uh, that basically determines how federal government agencies, uh, as well as some other um, entities that receive funding from the federal government, have to purchase and deploy electronic and information technology uh, that is accessible. Um, the second law that people talk about um, is the Americans with Disabilities Act. We tend to think of this more in terms of wheelchair ramps and those sorts of things. Um, and in fact, there's a mixed legal record in terms of how it applies to information technology, in particular to public facing websites. Um, there have been court, court cases decided on both sides um, that determine that have determined that in some cases, public facing websites are indeed a public space um, and thus need accommodation under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, around the world, there are similar laws. Uh, in the UK, there's something called the Equality Act. And in the EU, there is a draft, um, not yet voted on, act called the European Accessibility Act. And they're all quite similar to each other. So people ask themselves, why should we care about accessibility? Well, there are actually lots of great reasons. So one is you might care about helping people with disabilities, uh, basically have more access to the world around them. Second is you want to reach the largest possible audience with the content that you're creating in Tableau. A third is something that most people actually don't think about, is that many accessibility practices are also good usability practices. We'll see some examples from the Tableau world later on, but a good example of this from the physical world are, in fact, wheelchair ramps. You know, originally designed to help people um, who may use wheelchairs or walkers or stuff to have access to a building, but they actually are useful for people who might be, say, pushing a baby stroller. Um, so it's adds usability for a wide variety of people, not just people with disabilities. Another reason to care about accessibility, particularly relevant for this group, is that it may be the law, uh, depending on your workplace uh, and its requirements. And then different organizations, including some private businesses, do have their own uh, accessibility requirements from time to time. And that's actually becoming more common. So, before we get going, I want to, or before we get kind of more specific, we need to scope things down. Uh, so software accessibility is a big topic, and Tableau is a fairly big product. Um, and so in order to kind of make sense of accessibility, we wanted to make sure that we were focusing our efforts on what could help the greatest number of people. And if you look at the number of people, or all of the people who interact with Tableau in some way, the biggest number of them, in fact, the vast majority of them, are interacting with existing content that's been published to one of our web-based platforms, either Tableau Server, Tableau Online, or Tableau Public. So first, as we you know, kind of have our accessibility journey here at Tableau, we're making sure that we're focusing first on the use cases that help the greatest number of people, which is accessibility for published content. So this is content that's published to one of our our web-based platforms and access through a web browser. So that then leads us into web accessibility standards, because there are actually some very good ones out there that help us and guide us in terms of what it helps, what it takes to make something accessible for people with disabilities. So the set of guidelines that are out there um, are called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, the WCAG, or as it's pronounced in the business, WCAG. So this is a set of guidelines developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C. Uh, the W3C is the standards body that basically develops all of the standards for how the internet works. Uh, say, for example, how browsers and servers communicate with each other and so forth. So the WCAG is a set of recommendations for making web content more accessible. So recommendations to the creators of web content. 
And then they also establish standards for how web content and various kinds of assistive technologies, or AT, interact with each other. So they basically allow or set the standards so that screen reader software can make sense of content that's in a, a browser. They also constitute the international reference standard for web accessibility. So if you look around the world at the various accessibility laws, they reference the WCAG as their set of official guidelines for web content accessibility. For Section 508, there's been a recent change in that uh, just this past January, it was uh, moved uh, to make the WCAG be the official um, set of standards for web content. And that actually takes effect in January of next year. Um, through my interaction with many customers throughout the U.S. federal government, I've learned that many Section 508 offices are already using the WCAG standards, knowing that these are coming down the line. They're actually more, they're actually more strict than the Section 508 standards uh, for web content, and because they're developed specifically for web content, they give a lot more specific guidelines than Section 508 does. Um, so I want to get into the WCAG a little bit. I do encourage everyone who is interested and impacted by this topic to actually read the WCAG. I include links to this at the, uh, in the presentation slides at the end, and we'll distribute the slides uh, to the attendees as well. As well. Um, it's not that long, and it actually really helps you understand kind of what the ideas behind accessibility are to really help you make good choices when developing your content. So the WCAG is divided into what are called four principles and associated guidelines. So of the four principles, the first two are perceivable and operable. Perceivable basically means that the information uh, on a web browser and its user interface must be perceivable or presented to users in ways that they can perceive. So perhaps it's visually, perhaps it's audially, perhaps it's tactilely. Um, that's what perceivable means. Operable means that the user interface components and navigation must be operable in ways that people can operate. So if someone, for example, can only use a sip and puff switch, they should be able to operate the UI and navigation of the web content. Understandable, it means that the information operation must be understandable. A lot of this is about documentation to make sure that people understand uh, how they are meant to interact with the user interface, as well as regularity of interaction so that surprises don't happen for people. And then the last, principle is robust. Basically, this means that the technology must be in a, te the content must be robust enough that it can interface with assistive technologies both now and in the future. Within the WCAG, there are three levels of um, accessibility standards, A, AA, and AAA. A is the minimum standard, and AAA is the most stringent. AA is the most important level to target. AA is what satisfies the, both of the current laws as well as proposed laws, say, for example, in the European Union. And it is, in fact, the level that the new Section 508 guidelines require. Uh, these are stackable, uh, basically meaning that in order to meet the AA requirement, you have to meet all of the AA guidelines as well as the A guidelines. AAA is relatively rarely used because it does impose very significant design constraints on web content. It's difficult to make kind of more standard web content meet AAA guidelines without significant changes. So this brings us to what our first goal for accessibility is. So what our goal is, is to enable authors to create content that is WCAG AA conforming when that content is published to Tableau server online or public and when those workbooks are embedded inside of WCAG conforming web pages. So that is our goal here. Um, it's all about the content when published. So now if you go through, um, the WCAG is, it's not huge, but it's, you know, it's, it's a number of pages long. Um, and a lot of it actually doesn't have anything to do with Tableau content. So what I did here was I distilled down and I went and I got rid of all of the guidelines that don't have relevance to Tableau content and divided them into two categories. Those things that are the responsibility of the author when they're doing the creation of the content and those things that are responsibility of us to make sure that our tool works correctly 
uh, in these kinds of situations. I'm going to go into these uh, in more detail, all of the author-based ones. But in general, in terms of the Tableau responsibility, um, our responsibility is to make sure that the functionality in the Tableau visualization uh, can be accessed through a keyboard, as well as make sure that um, all of the content that you produce um, basically can interface correctly with assistive technology. So once you distill down even further and you say, ah, what are all of the guidelines that are relevant specifically to Tableau authors? There's actually only five of them. So the whole, the whole uh, question gets much simpler. So now we're going to go and we're going to look at each of these in turn and how they apply to Tableau content. So the big thing to remember here when we get started is that accessibility is a design choice. It is a requirement that you need to keep in mind when you're creating content, just like any other requirement. There will never be a day where you can flip a switch and unaccessible content becomes accessible. It's something that you have to keep in mind as you're developing uh, your visualizations in Tableau. And because Tableau is so flexible and allows you to make lots of choices, you need to keep in mind what those choices are that make content more or less accessible. So let's go through what these mean. So the first guideline is around text alternatives for non-text content. This is probably the single most important one for Tableau because a huge portion of the content in a visualization is non-text. It's a visualization. So the guideline basically says that non-text content needs to have a textual alternative that serves the equivalent purposes. So um, the way you do this is in Tableau, um, the view data page for a visualization will allow you to get to the underlying data in a cross-tab form. In Tableau 10.2, we've made it such that you can use keyboard navigation to open the view data window for any visualization uh, that you access in a web browser, and then use the keyboard as well as assistive technology to navigate the resulting table of data so that you can, for example, have a screen reader read that data to you. An alternate, alternate thing to do is to create an HTML data table of data that's external to the visualization. Say, on the web page next to the embedded Tableau content. Um, you can do this by using the JavaScript Get Data API, and I've got a link to some great examples uh, at the end of the presentation uh, that show you exactly how to do that. Another very good practice is use the caption, uh, basically use the caption functionality in Tableau to provide a textual description of what's in a visualization, so that you could say something like, well, on the x-axis, it's this data. On the y-axis, it's that data. And so someone who is navigating the visualization uh, and is trying to decide whether to go delve into uh, the cross-tab, uh, say if they're using a screen reader, it's very helpful for them to get an overall description of what that visualization is so they can tell whether or not they might be interested in looking at its data more closely. Some interesting uh, newer things on the market that may help in this area are, quite, are what are called natural language generation tools. Uh, so basically these are basically AI-driven tools that can produce data-driven textual narratives for visualizations. So what they do is they, you set up a narrative, kind of a narrative structure inside of them, inside of uh, their authoring environment, and then you send data from Tableau uh, to the tools, usually over the web, and they will generate a textual description of that data. So it's not static, it's actually driven by the data itself. Uh, there are three companies in this space, and all of them have recently kind of announced how they can do integration with Tableau. Uh, again, I have links in the presentation uh, to their web pages that talk about this. Uh, the three are called Automated Insights, Narrative Science, and EasyOp. That's how you pronounce that last, last one. Uh, Automated Insights actually won uh, the Hackathon Award at Tableau Conference this past year on some work they did to integrate Tableau with Alexa, um, as well as you know, read Tableau um, visualizations back to a user. Okay, moving on. Uh, next set of guidelines is about enabling different ways of presenting content. There are two things here. Is One is that basically the information structure and relationships that are in the visualization must be available in textual form. 
The second is that these instructions or ways of understanding the interface can't rely solely on particular sensory characteristics. So what does that mean? Uh, well, in, term, in Tableau terms, it means basically a best practice would be to provide text that explains how various components of a visualization relate and to keep those instructions clear uh, and simple. So my example down here in the bottom right corner of the screen, I have two examples. So it's very common uh, on the left with the big red X, which is a, a, a no-go in terms of accessibility, is people will place a legend for a graph on top of or near the graph that it goes with. And if you are a sighted user, you usually can have the understanding that, ah, yes, that legend goes with that graph. But imagine someone who's trying to navigate this visualization using a screen reader. They would have no understanding um, that this legend on the left here goes with that plot. So on the right, I modified it to basically give the legend a title that clearly indicates what it belongs to. So in this case, the, the graph is called number of students by SAT score. And so I named the legend legend for number of students by SAT score. Next is to make it easier for users to see content. So the big guideline here is that color should not be used as the only visual means of conveying information or distinguishing elements. Again, very important for Tableau since color is used very frequently uh, to allow people to distinguish different sections or marks on a visualization from each other. So best practices. So first, uh, Tableau does come with a colorblind color palette. You can use a colorblind color palette. That will help people distinguish things from each other who have a red-green color blindness, which is most common. But as we learned, there are other kinds of color blindness, including the lack of ability to see color at all. And so in order to meet the guideline and to allow those people to still access the content, you need to have other ways to allow people to distinguish elements from each other. So my example here is a line chart that is, uses color to allow people to see the lines from, tell the lines from each other, but I've added shapes as a secondary mark on top of these so that people can say, ah yes, it's not just the gray line, but it's the gray line with plus marks on it. So that then allows color to be basically irrelevant in terms of what's required to distinguish these elements. Next along the same path is contrast. So we did talk about contrast sensitivity loss. And so the way that you deal with that is to make sure that for text or images of text, that there's a certain contrast ratio between the foreground and the background color. There are various color contrast analyzer tools. They basically allow you to use like a little eyedropper on the screen and you can you know, select the foreground color and the background color and it will tell you in terms of the WCAG guidelines whether it meets you know, which level of standard or not. Um, again, I have a link at the back of the presentation to uh, probably the most common tool. It's called Color Contrast Analyzer. So on the left, I have an example of text where the contrast between the foreground and background color is not sufficient to meet the WCAG AA guidelines. And on the right, the color is sufficient to meet the guidelines. Luckily, the default foreground and background color for text in Tableau does meet the guidelines. So if you just leave the text color, the dark gray that it is, and a white background, you're good to go. Next is a host of basically items around helping it make, make it easier for users to navigate. And these things are making sure that um, there are good descriptions, good headings, good labels, uh, good text for links that open web browsers so that you don't have a web browser link that's called link. It actually is descriptive to let someone know um, where they're gonna go if they select that link. And so basically the best practice here is to make sure that all of your titles and labels and any external web links in your visualization are clear and self-explanatory. All right, and our last one is to do something which is called help users avoid and correct mistakes. Again, this is about the documentation and how you label things. So you wanna make sure that you label all of your controls, your filters, your highlighters, and et cetera, in a way that describes what their purpose is, and then provide instructions for using uh, the content in a text zone in the dashboard or perhaps in the um, in a uh, HTML next to the visualization. 
All right, so let's look at all of these uh, kind of combined together into a single case study where we're going to take our old friend, the SAT performance visualization that we showed earlier, and make it more accessible. Because right now, it does not meet the WCAG guidelines. So what's wrong with it? Well, there are a number of things. So first is that there's lots of stuff that's only distinguishable by color. So starting in the top left, we have uh, this kind of custom filter control uh, that one of our people made quite some time ago. Um, and the, uh, the marks here are the, the text here is only distinguishable from each other by color. And if you look at the marks in the plot, the line plot as well as the histogram, those marks are only distinguishable by color. Second is that the contrast ratio for the text in the visualization is too low in some cases. So if you go over here again uh, to the left where it says select college, um, things like College of Public Affairs, which is a yellow on a gray background. That's not uh, a sufficient contrast ratio, and that's, I think, just hard to read for everybody. And then overall in the visualization and the dashboard, there are just insufficient or missing descriptions, instructions, and captions. It would be very difficult for someone to come to this dashboard and be able to easily understand how you operate it and what um, various things you can do in the dashboard are. Okay, so now let's take this and let's turn it into something that's more accessible. So I took it and I did what I'm calling, I hit it with the accessibility stick and I came out with this visualization, a new version of the same functionality of the visualization that when published to Tableau server or online in version Tableau 10.2 can meet the WCAG AA guidelines and thus meet the section 508 guidelines. So let's look at what I did. So first is that I embedded the dashboard in a WCAG AA conforming web page. So this is really important because the way the guidelines work is if any element in the web page does not conform, then the entire piece of content does not conform. We focus so far just on content accessibility. So the Tableau server and online interfaces, if you were to log directly into those, those interfaces are not yet accessible. We have plans to make them accessible in the future, but today they're not. So you'll need to take the dashboard and embed it into another web page. Luckily, that's usually the most common way our customers distribute visualizations to their end users is through some sort of custom portal. The next thing I did was that I made sure that all of the text color meets the, and foreground and background meets the minimum contrast guidelines. In this case, I used black on white, um, but again, the default color in Tableau uh, would have worked as well. Then I switched over to the standard filter controls um, so that they're, uh, for a number of reasons. One, they're a little easier to understand how to operate. Um, and we've made these types of filter controls keyboard navigable and work with assistive technology. So the kinds of filter controls that in Tableau 2 work this way are all of the list uh, filters, either checkboxes or radio buttons, the kinds that I'm using here. The second is that I added descriptive text and instructions for using the dashboard. Uh, I did this in HTML outside of the zone of the dashboard. Uh, the reason I did this is we haven't yet gotten to um, text zones and dashboards for, assist, for supporting assistive technology. Um, so you can do it in HTML outside of the dashboard. I also added descriptive captions for the graphs. So if you're navigating this with a screen reader, um, the, description, the screen reader will read the captions to the graphs to you to tell you what the graph is all about. I also was very clear on making sure that I'm ex extremely consistent on what I call the various controls in the descriptions and in the labels for the controls. So when I reference the select academic year control, for example, in the descriptions, that's actually the name of the control. It's not something different or slightly different, and that will help people make sure that they understand that, ah, yes, this is the exact control that's meant by in the instructions. For the legends, as I talked about earlier, I named them in a way that makes sure that people can understand that they go with their associated graph. I also used shape marks that are encoded with color um, in order to um, better distinguish or allow ways other than color to distinguish the marks from each other. 
Um, for the, the line chart, it's a little bit tricky right now. You have to actually use a uh, secondary axis and put a, additional shape marks on top of those lines. Uh, on the shape marks, however, you can encode them both with shapes and with color. I also went ahead and used the colorblind color palette for all of the marks. Um, this is not strictly required by the WCAG, um, but I think it's a good practice because it allows a large number of people um, who have red-green colorblindness to not have to use the shape encodings in order to distinguish the elements from each other. Uh, it makes it more accessible for people with that particular visual disability. And then finally, um, again, not completely required by the WCAG, but I simplified a lot of the text uh, that was in the vis original visualization to remove redundancies. And the reason I did that is when you use a screen reader, it can be very, very verbose in terms of reading everything to you that's on the screen. And the less redundant and unnecessary content that's there, the better for the user of a screen reader. Uh, cognitive overload is a significant challenge for people who use screen readers to navigate content. And so by applying all of these changes, I basically turned something that was not WCAG conforming into something that is when it's published to Tableau server or online. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. I've got a question that just came through um, a, a little bit ago from uh, Adam Crane, good friend of the GovTug and also our tech guru. Um, he, he's asking, uh, it seems like many of the author design choices for accessibility contradict visual analytic best practices, i.e. removing redundant text, chart junk, good use of color and space. Is there any thought to a button at the bottom of published content to load a different version of a visualization design for accessibility, like a design, a device designer type switch from standard content to uh, more accessible? Um, that's a great question. Um, that has not been something that we have talked about. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, in general, uh, if you talk to people in the accessibility business, they really try to steer you away from creating accessible alternatives. Um, because in general, they tend to see in practice the accessible alternative tend to kind of not get updated, not get changed, um, and kind of be left to rot over time. Uh, that's just what happens. And so uh, when they talk to people who are developing websites, um, you know, the first inclination people have is, oh, we'll have a regular website and then an accessible website. And what they see in practice is that the accessible website tends to lag behind. Um, but I think it's a great comment about, you know, some of the things that we're doing here um, do contra contradict some of the visual design best practices. You know, I know the idea of having multiple encodings for the same thing is, is one of those. Um, and so, you know, again, accessibility is a design choice. And just like all other design choices, sometimes they, you know, kind of butt heads with each other. Um, and it's really making sure, I think it's really about making sure that um, you're serving the audience that you're trying to serve and you know what that audience is and what its requirements are. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Adam. All right. So what is coming in Tableau? Uh, so actually, it's more like what came in Tableau. Um, so basically, for workbooks that you've published to Tableau server, online or public, and embedded inside of a WCAG AA conforming web page, uh, you now get keyboard navigation, and I'll go into detail about what the keyboard navigation is for, um, elimination of keyboard traps, a focus indicator, and so forth, as well as assistive technology support. You also get accessible view data functionality. So you can use a keyboard command to open up the view data page for any visualization, um, either just a plain visualization uh, worksheet or viz in a dashboard, and then navigate that view data uh, window using a keyboard and assistive technology. We have guidelines that are part of the Tableau server and Tableau desktop documentation, um, basically for helping you achieve the WCAG AA conformance. It's basically the stuff I've talked about in this presentation, but in online help form. Um, we also have updated VPAT and WCAG conformance statement documents um, that are substantially different than the ones that we've distributed in the past. These are focused on content that one creates. So instead of being a VPAT for the product as a whole, which includes the authoring environment, 
what we did is we created a set of representative content in Tableau that uses the features um, that are accessible and then tested those against the Section 508 and WCAG standards. And just so you know, we do use a third party consultant to do that testing for us. They also have helped us with our plans and validating what we're doing here uh, with accessibility at Tableau. In terms of uh, keyboard and assistive technology support in Tableau 10.2, uh, you have support for sheet tabs, if you have a workbook with multiple sheets, uh, titles, so titles both of dashboards and of worksheets, captions of uh, visualizations, legends, so you can navigate the legend, select the highlight and such in legend, uh, quick filters, specifically the list quick filters, radio button and checkbox, as well as the view data window. In terms of the gaps and things that we're going to be working on over time in our next releases, uh, we're looking to add more filter types. Um, so, you know, to make sure we get, for example, the 20% of the filter types that are used in 80% of the content. You know, that's kind of how we're tackling this is to make sure we get the most used features first. Uh, the visualization toolbar. So right now, the standard toolbar that shows up at the bottom of the Tableau Viz is not accessible. Uh, that's something that we're going to be adding in a future release. Um, so if you're using Tableau Server or online and publishing content, you need to turn off the toolbar, uh, which is something that you can do using uh, the embed codes. Um, on Tableau Public, unfortunately, you can't turn off the toolbar, so um, that content won't technically meet WCAG conforming standards until we make the toolbar accessible, which is on our roadmap and uh, should be coming later this year. Also, parameter controls, map controls, text zones and dashboards. Um, one of the real tricky things are navigation of marks. Um, so ultimately, we would like people to be able to use the keyboard to navigate around for marks and so forth. Um, that's a pretty tricky topic, actually, because you can put literally 10,000 or 100,000 marks uh, in a Tableau Viz. Um, not really sure what a good way to navigate, say, a scatter plot with 10,000 marks is. Uh, but that's something that we need to think about. And then as well, the interfaces for Tableau Server and Tableau Online, uh, particularly for content consumption use cases. So someone is logging in to be able to browse for and find content that's stored on Tableau Server or Tableau Online. So those are the things on our roadmap going forward. And that actually brings me to the end of the presentation. Uh, the slides, as I mentioned throughout, have a number of links in them to the various tools and tips and tricks and so, so forth that I've referenced throughout the presentation. Uh, and again, we'll make sure that these are available to you. And finally, we talked about accessibility basics, our web accessibility standards, how to author a case study and what's coming. And so um, I hope that this presentation has given you a good basic background in what accessibility is, how we're approaching it, how web accessibility works, how it applies to Tableau, and how you can make your content more accessible. And thank you very much. Thanks, Kyle. We, we just got another question from one of our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. They're asking, um, do screen readers currently work with drop-down type filters for long lists? Uh, they do not. That's going to be coming um, later this year for sure. Cool. Yeah, just the, just the, the list ones that are all fully visible, but not the drop-down ones. But the drop-down ones are next on our list of things to make accessible. Well, good. I'll keep Q&A open for a little bit longer if anybody has questions. Uh, anything to, to add, um, I'll keep an eye open for those. Uh, really, it's great presentation, Kyle. It's, it's, it's kind of given me a, a, a new direction on how to, how to go through and think about the design process. Great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I know. Uh, personally, I was thinking about this this morning where I always found out, uh, well, I, I always considered accessibility after I started the design process. So oh, it yeah. was one of those things that kind of came as an afterthought. And it's, it's, it made it a lot easier um, when I started designing uh, from the, from the get-go mm -hmm. about some of, these, some of these items here. Cool. We, we've got some questions coming through. Um, one question, um, is Tableau going to make it easy to add shape to line graphs without using the dual axis? Yeah, that, that is a great question. Uh, absolutely something that we should do. Uh, it is on our list of many great things that we need to do in the product. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question is about screen readers and tooltips. 
Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're asking, you know, do, do screen readers, would they pick up tooltips? Uh, they don't currently. Um, that's going to be part of the challenge of the navigation of the marks themselves uh, in order to allow people to get to a mark using a keyboard uh, and then get to the content of the tooltip, including things like links and so forth there. So as of yet, no. Uh, that is on, I would say, the longer term roadmap. Hey, Kyle, this is Emily. Just a quick question about the roadmap itself. Mm -hmm. um, it, public, it, can you share um, maybe in the Tableau community forum or some or on the government um, community forum, just general um, time frames about the accessibility roadmap? So for example, um, you know, so we kind of get an idea of what's on the shorter term versus moderate or longer term. I know that things change, but I also think that that's helpful to just understand what's coming in the product because that may, I mean, that just yeah. may help us understand what we do or conversations we need to have with individuals in our own organizations about what we do to design um, Dash. Sure. So I would um, basically that list that I had of things coming after Tableau 10 2, that is more or less the priority order. So you would expect things uh, at the top of that list to come sooner and things at the bottom of the list to come later. Um, beyond that, we basically just work on things uh, until they're ready to ship. Um, I can tell you there won't be anything coming in the upcoming Tableau 10 3 release, uh, but we have several things that were planned for the Tableau 10, 10 4 release or whatever we end up calling it uh, in Q3 of this year. Uh, in particular, the visualization toolbar and the drop-down filters. Great. Thank you so much. And we also have another question. Um, it's Somebody asked, what is the purpose of having the legend titles? So I think this was just a mm -hmm. refresher on why you need to have legend titles. Yeah, so it's to make sure that if someone is navigating, um, you know, imagine that you're navigating um, the screen and you can't see the screen. All you can hear are the... Um, all you can hear are the things the screen reader reads to you. And so basically what that will help is make sure that someone knows that the element that they're on is the legend, what it's the legend for. So they'll get to a graph and you should name it in such a way that they understand that, ah, yes, this is a visualization. And then you would say, use the keyboard to hit tab again. You go to the legend perhaps, uh, depending on how your dashboard is laid out. Um, and then it would read to you the title of the legend. And so you'd be, you would understand that this legend goes along with um, that particular graph. It looks like another question just came through. Um, let's see here. It says, I think it's a bit greedy request for me. Would Tableau come up with evaluate for WCAG button? Uh, or menu to review the developed view dashboard automatically and recommend what are the things needed to, to be changed in the dashboard to meet the WCAG standards? Uh, I think that's a great suggestion. You know, our focus right now is on making sure that the tool allows you to meet the WCAG standards and that more things available in the tool do meet the, can meet those standards. Thanks, thanks. And the audience has had some great questions. R really, any, any other questions come through? It was perfect, perfect time for them. We've we still got a, a few minutes. So, um, Adam Crane has asked, uh, would uh, tiling be optimal for screen readers? I'm thinking of some floating designs using text boxes for lines, et cetera. Yes, yeah, so it'll ignore, I mean, I, I would say the tiling are better. It basically reads from bottom to top, left to right is kind of how it works. Um, so anything that's more understandable in that way is how the tab order is set um, for keyboard navigation, um, which is kind of how you use screen readers. Um, things like lines and other things that are in there, the screen reader will just ignore. Um, things that it doesn't understand uh, in Tableau, uh, it will, will just be ignored. Um, in general, though, if you look at content that is made, really made to be accessible, it tends to be simpler. Um, and so this is where you get into, I think, a real, you know, it's a challenge. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that it doesn't exist about how to balance your various requirements. Because um, the more complex that your design is, 
the more difficult it's going to be for someone who's using a keyboard and assistive technology to navigate. So if you, if you look at websites, for example, that were really designed um, for that purpose, they tend to be much simpler uh, than other websites. So Kyle, Emily, um, just as a follow on to that, um, I just, I wasn't sure if I heard you correctly. So can you just um, repeat, at least for me, um, how the screen reader actually reads the screen? Because I thought I heard you say from the bottom to the top? Uh, no, so so basically it, it, is, it is affiliated with the keyboard. And so basically it reads whatever has the key focus and you use uh, it depends on the specific screen reader because screen readers often have their own keyboard navigation commands that they overlay on top of the standard ones. Um, but if you're using something like NVDA, which is the one that I use most when I'm playing with this, and I, I would have done a, a, a demo of this, but it's actually quite difficult to get it to work over these web conferencing uh, things in a way that's very satisfactory. But basically what would happen is you start, you enter the page and you hit tab and it goes to let's say you have a dashboard and you hit tab and it'll go into the dashboard zone on the web page. The first thing that it'll read is the title of the dashboard. And then if you hit tab again, it'll go to the first, it'll basically start at the top and go down and then over to the right and go down. So it goes top to bottom, left to right. Gotcha. Okay. And so it'll hit like a visualization. If it's a visualization and the caption is visible, it'll read the caption too. Uh, and then so on and so forth. Okay. And so then as a just, and sorry if I'm slow on the uptake, oh, but no. a follow on to Adam's question about floating versus tiled. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you tab over whatever the object is that it hit, that the tab hits first, that's what it will read. So if you've floated a couple of objects maybe on top of each other, whichever one maybe is to the, to, this is very crude, but to the left, the most left, that's the one it would read first? Um, I, I believe that is correct. Um, generally speaking, these things get kind of confusing. Um, you know, one of the, the uh, I guess, what, what I, my suggestion would be to make things as simple as possible and use the grid layout rather than floating things. Again, it, there's a tension here um, that you can't really avoid between complexity of visual design and accessibility. So just to, to give you a little maybe kind of technical insight into why the answer to the question is not that simple um, is that the assistive technology is designed to work with standard web pages, with title tags, H1s, H2s, all of those sorts of things. And that's how assistive technology basically understands a web page. Now, for web pages that are not like that, there is this technology called ARIA. Um, it basically allows you to fake and tell that some element that you have on a page is like an H1 or like a title or something like that. And so, What's inside of a Tableau visualization is completely custom. So it's totally, it's total, you know, Tableau technology to make this rich interactive visualization inside of a web browser. And so what we've had to go do is basically mark up the code that we put in that zone to make it look like normal HTML content to assistive technology. And so normal HTML content doesn't really have concepts like floating zones and stuff like that. And so that's why there starts to get to be some, you know, you'd have to just play with it to see exactly how it behaves and whether it behaves in a satisfactory way. So Adam has one more question. He was asking uh, about screen readers. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's asking, would it go in the, or, the object order in the layout tab? Or perhaps that's also possibly an, an idea or a concept um, for screen readers. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, <laughs> Again, it goes top to bottom, left to right. Um, but that's an interesting idea. Okay. And another question we got uh, is, will Tableau be adding dashed lines in a line graph like we have for reference lines? Yeah, so, so kind of along the same lines of um, 
adding shapes on top of, of lines. Uh, yeah, so th there are a number of things that, that we, we can do, and they're you know, kind of on the list of the many great things um, that we need to do. Uh, so I would say shapes on top of lines, so shape encodings for lines, uh, line style encodings for lines. The other thing uh, that is useful for this are fill styles. Um, for basically anything that's like a filled shape. So, you know, hash marks, patterns, those sorts of things as well. So those are all of the kinds of things that um, would really, A, I think be useful for a wide variety of people in Tableau and are super useful for people who are creating business for accessibility. One question also about uh, just screen readers is, has there been any thought of perhaps even, I don't know if it's like mimicking an alt tag or, uh, doing something similar to that where you're able to build the chart, but then you're also able to um, create a tag for that chart that will give it a, a description. So that's, that's actually how the caption works. Okay. So, so basically when you add a caption, it becomes the alt tag for the image that is the visualization. Great, folks. Any more questions? Oh, they're saying how soon. Uh, Heidi's asking this about her the uh, dashed line question. Oh, I, that, that's a question I can't answer. That's that's. We have a long list of great things we need to work on. Great, great. Well, folks, we're almost out of time. Uh, be sure to to get your questions in. If not, you, you can always send them in through either uh, Twitter or you can send them right through to the community page too. And we'd be happy to get them through to Kyle. Um, also, Emily would be happy to, <laughs> to assist as well. Um, we, had, we had planned on showing some of the, uh, the tiny Tableau tips, but uh, we've run out of time because well, it's just been a really good conversation. Um, but we'll also provide a link to that in the, uh, the community forums uh, under, the, uh, under the government uh, tag. Yeah. This has been so great. Thank you all for this great conversation. And I think it is a, um, you know, it's, to me, it's the start of the conversation. Certainly, um, we have a lot to discuss and a lot to do. And I think it's great that we're starting the conversation and to continue it on. So thank you, Kyle. And thank you to every, all of our participants today. And we uh, will, start, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Folks, thank you so much for coming on. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and let's continue this conversation.